<laughs> Let's play! Whoa! Ah yes, the almighty black screen. It wouldn't be a stream of mine if it wasn't for that black screen. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen! You all may call me Pharaoh, and welcome to another stream of Chicken Police Painted Red. Now, uh... I've been enjoying this game. Just, just because of the story itself, I'm intrigued. So, I just simply want to continue and see what else there is to do. Ooh, a nice cup of coffee a la Zip, huh? If he forgave us for wrecking his joint last time. Oh, Ooh, a sorry. Nice cup there we of go. Coffee a la Zip, huh? We're not here for the coffee, Marty. Zip always knows more than what he lets on. It'd be worth interrogating the old trash panda. If he forgave us for wrecking his joint last time. He'll never forgive us, Marty, but we helped him out of trouble so many times, he's not going to have any choice. I hope you're right, old bird. Alrighty, so yeah, I believe, like, in the last part, the last main thing that we did was actually meet Natasha Katsenko, and it looks like somebody wrote whore all over her wall, and so we gotta figure out what the hell happened. So she actually invited us over to her weekend home, and there's the key for it. And, uh, it's like, well, I guess we'll have to look at it, try it out. And... Before we actually go there, though, we're back here because I want to see if there's anything going to be different. This is a, a timed area, so I just want to see if there's anything to do here. Everything all right, old man? If there's something we can do for you, uh, just say so, okay? Well, all right. Hey, old man. Everything all right? Any trouble? Still nothing. Hey, old man. Still nothing. So I don't know if this, if this is actually going to change where he will speak to us eventually, but I figure it doesn't hurt to try and see. Ah, uh, is that the kite? I, I, yeah, yeah. So I want to say everything else is going to be exactly Once the same. This broke. No matter how big the city is, Marty, I feel more and more like I'm living in prison. Hey, it's not too late to skip off, boss. You only have 121 days left, right? 120. Then, retirement. So, what's keeping you? I don't know. I could have left even earlier. But the city won't let me go. You're afraid of change, huh? Everyone's afraid of change, on a certain level. But no, that's not what I'm talking about. The city just keeps pulling me back. If it wasn't for this case, <laughs> I could have drunk myself to death. Even the afterlife is better than Clawville. Sometimes I think that. Uh, I think you're beyond help, boss. Or maybe he just doesn't want to let it go for one reason or another. That's all on him. If you gaze into the city, the city will gaze into you. Okay. Deeply poetic or deeply philosophical? Or you know what? Have you ever guys met somebody where they think they're deep or they think they're philosophical and they'll just say whatever, but in reality it's like, really? That, that doesn't really mean anything. I don't know. Maybe it's just me. If you gaze into... Oh, this quiet. You know, I understand why Zip escaped here when he got out of his shady dealings. It's not possible to get all the way out, Marty. What? So... You also stay a cop, even after retirement? Every cop stays a cop. It burns itself into you. That's good to know. So am I going to stay a cop forever? Sorry, Marty. Well, that's that. The Hive. City of insects. More like a ghetto. I hope we never investigate there again. We won't, Marty. This is our last job. Don't say that, boss. Watch them investigate it later today. The hive. We Don't say that. All right. Uh, Zagor, welcome to the stream. Hope you're doing well today. In happier news, Persona 5 Scramble finally got its Western release date announced. That's right, Poke Girl. Yep, February 23rd. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people will enjoy that one. 
I'm assuming it's just like Dynasty Warriors with a Persona skin on it, yeah? Praise be unto you, O great neon god. Hallowed be thy name and thy pancakes. Amen. That wasn't blasphemous whatsoever. I once dreamed that his eyes were moving. He just looked into me. At least it was just a dream for you. I always feel like he's following me with his gaze. Even now as we speak. I once dreamed at least Well that'd be creepy if like if somehow followed the cursor. <laughs> Thankfully it's not doing that. So it is like Dynasty Warriors style battling. Okay. I'm sure a lot of people are going to really enjoy it. This makes the bile rise in my waddle. Yeah, me too. Ah, oh, jeez, boys. Out of 2,000 joints in the city, I had to end up here, huh? Hello to you too, Zip. How's it hanging? I had no problems until now. Ah, oh, don't be such a drama queen. We just want to ask you a couple of questions, then we're out of here. And we won't even trash your place this time. What do you say? I say let's get it over with very, very quickly, chickens. Relax, pal. We'll be as fast as a hummingbird. I'm not your pal. And you're as far from a hummingbird as I'm from a polar bear. Oh, come on, Zip. Don't be so hard on yourself. There's actually somebody new here as well. Which we'll talk to in just a second. Uh... It takes place six months after the events of the main game, so don't play unless you want to get spoiled. Assuming you have not played Persona 5 Royal. Not connected to Persona 5 because the characters are just in Persona 5 Royal. So what's funny is like I have Persona 5, and I actually just picked up Persona 5 Royal because of Black Friday. It was like super, super cheap. So eventually, I, I want to play both games. That'll take like literally two or 300 hours out of my life. So I probably won't be getting anywhere near those in a while but we'll see but i mean i'm not super super like in a, in a in a in a sense of making a pun i'm not scrambling to get persona 5 scramble when it first comes out i can wait so oh okay, yeah these are all like oh look we almost got that's what happened. Like, we have to, like, go to new places and the jukebox is going to get filled up. Okay. We're only missing a few of them. You can't boo me. It's my stage. This is what they call me. <laughs> it's going to be me. Yeah, I think, we, I think we've seen all these already. I don't think anything's going to change. I wouldn't need hearing. Well, I, I like being thorough. Do you remember that time when Zip made you wash dishes all night? Do I remember? I'll never... F At least you've learned... Your because you're... Well, I... Yeah. I want to say, actually, that was new, but oh well. Let's see who this is first. Damn it, what's the scribbler doing here? Sniffing some juicy story. I think I still owe him a great big left hook. Why did he do this time? Oh, nothing. Just since I first met him, I wanted to punch him in the face. I can understand that. The Scribbler? Timothy, huh? We don't have to talk to him, right? Impossible to avoid, Marty. Not if he hasn't gone blind or deaf since we last saw him. Timothy Saltwater is the meddler journalist of the Clawville Chronicle. That wouldn't be a problem in itself, but unfortunately, he's a huge fan and the architect of the chicken police legend. Timothy. Hello, Timothy. Scribblers don't celebrate New Year's. Hello, boys. <laughs> what a pleasure to see you. Answering your question. No, not really. Not me, anyway. I'm always where the story is. Mm-hmm. And where's the story now? I can't see it anywhere. It just stepped through the door, pal. Oh, you mean us. Well, I think I'll have to disappoint you. The chicken police are back together? I, I can't let that go without an ink stain, am I right? No, Timmy, you can. We're not working. We're just having a little fun, that's all. Mm, I'm not buying that, boys. You'll have to, Tim. Eh, we'll see about that. 
And I think you're right, Zagor. I, I believe they did mention Saltwater in the, in the last stream. I just forgot what context they brought him up. Is that rag you work for still around, Tim? You mean the most read and highest ranking newspaper of the city, the Clawville Chronicle? Oh yeah, that's what it's called. <laughs> I see that you still have your famous sense of humor, Sonny. Such a joy. <laughs> yeah, I do. You can tell that they really hate each other, huh? So, how about you tell me what you're really doing here? Not a chance, Timbo. The truth is, we're already leaving. Sorry, pal. Maybe next time. So, not a sorry, pal. Okay, well, I guess that's all we're going to get out of Timothy right now. So let's focus our attention to Zip. Gods, he's in even worse shape than the last time we saw him. Well, Marty, aging is like that. And while we're at it, looks like you put on a few pounds. What? what? Who, me? <laughs> Don't make me laugh. I weigh exactly the same as I've always done. Yeah, sure. Mm, I mean... Time can be a bastard to a lot of us. I can see we're not particularly welcome. I wonder why. So? Out with it. Stop winding me up. I'm almost consumed by all this excitement. We've just come from the Czar Club, Zip. Who do you think we met? Uh, if I can guess one, I'd say, uh, was it His Majesty Hobart Ibn Wessler, the Rat Prime himself? That on, pal. What a surprise. So, what do you want to know? Just because I don't know anything. Of course you don't. Just a couple questions. Go on, boys. Hurry up, will you? I gotta be thorough, man. So, no, I won't hurry up. What's up, Zip? Quiet night, I see. And what's Timothy doing here? That's exactly what I asked him when he wound up here. But yeah, he's a regular nowadays. He must be sniffing some kind of story about the hive. About the riots? Have they reached here already? I ain't seen nothing. More cops around, yeah, as you can see for yourself. We're not on duty, Zip. It's still the same. A cop's a cop. A lot come by, but besides beating up bugs, nothing much happens. It will, Zip. I can sniff it in the air. If you say so, Sonny, your sense of smell is better than mine. <laughs> Maybe once. Now, is that true? Like, do... Do chickens or roosters have better sense of smell? I thought raccoons were really good at that. I, you know, I'm terrible when it comes to animals, frankly. I, I don't know many... Uh facts about them or care to know i guess huh what more do you want is it forbidden to stand around at your place go stand around somewhere else in the city huh is it go stand around all right let's ask him questions down the line which oh yeah i guess we already talked about himself so let's ask about everyone else look what we found zip furry hell who'd you beat to death for that Beat to death? Who do you think we are? We simply confiscated it. Yo, sneaky broilers. I'll give you 50 bucks for it. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. It's worth three times that. Aw, oh, come on. Give me a break. Tough luck, Trash Panda. Oh, the whiskey. Oh, yeah. We did steal it from the bar, apparently. I thought that was something that we asked for at the bar, like ordered it, but no. No, no. I guess we just took it. We also ran into Filmar. Filmar? Who's that? A grumpy old raggedy ass hawk. His manners are even worse than mine. Ring a bell? You mean Marlowe? Was Marlowe. Now he goes by Filmar Lowe. Oh, I see. So that means he's still alive? Yeah, I'm almost not surprised. The old guy has a reputation of being indestructible, eh? He is. And he gave us something that could mean something. Oh, we're going to let him know. Yeah, we're going to let him know about the list of names. Uh, apparently, a chicken's sense of smell is about as good as a human's. So, yeah, you, you're guessing a raccoon's smell is better. Okay, there you go. Look at this, Zip. Holy crap, what's this? The guest list at a king's birthday party. Hey, that's not even a bad guess. What do you make of it? 
This piece of paper's from so high up where I've never been myself, boys. So don't ask me. We spoke to Natasha. She's scared. Well, it's not good life insurance to be the girl of the most powerful gangster in the city. It's not about that. Someone's been writing offensive messages to her. She feels threatened. I only know that every second husband in the city wants to have her, and every second wife wants to wring her neck because of that. Nothing else. Thanks, Zip, but we're not any further ahead. But not further back, right? He makes a stupid good point, though. Uh, even if it wasn't really helpful, it doesn't set us back, so blah. Uh, I guess that's really all Is it that he can say or do. I'm not really sure if that's I helped us, why. really, besides knowing that Timothy's here. Timothy Sol And, uh... So, not sorry, pal. Okay, I guess that's it for now. And I'm, let me ask, let me just see if this guy's not saying anything new anymore. Hey, man. Still nothing. Still nothing. Okay. Let's clear this out. Uh, Tim? Oopsie daisy. Let's see. So if he saw water, he's a seagull. He's loud, annoying, and overly enthusiastic. And unfortunately, he is the number one fan of the chicken police. I thought that was Lewis. Scribbler Tim, a real name, Timothy Saltwater. He is a douchebag, a real nosy bastard, an annoying little shit. But still, I have to admit, he's the best investigative reporter in Clawsville. Uh, back in the day, he had a big part in the chicken police, becoming what we were for a long time. Real star, real stars cops. All right. So, let's take a look at the map. It has a very brutal opinion. So... We can actually go back to the Clawville PD. Let's, why not? I don't know, Sonny. What exactly are we doing here? Let's hope we can learn something about Natasha and Ibn by sniffing around before we visit that weekend house in Flowerville. Learn something from Phyllis and Roy's? Well, I wasn't exactly thinking about them. Yeah, figures. But at the same time, I mean, maybe it could help if we talk to them. Guess it doesn't hurt too much. And I'm not sure if they're going to add collectibles in places that we've already been to, but still. Do you remember our old squad car that ended up in a swamp? Huh, I could never get over that. It was the best partner I ever had. That's, uh, good to know, boss. Truth hurts, pal. Never mind. I'll live with it. Until he shoots him again, I bet. What was its name? The old car, I mean. Bessie? Uh, Nessa? Tessa. You know, like my daughter. I knew your daughter's Tessa, but... W wait, did you name your daughter after our old car? Why? What's wrong with that? Uh, maybe don't tell your daughter that, huh? Damn, even this car reminds me of Tessa. What, she's big and bulky? Uh, maybe I'll leave that alone. That wasn't us, right? Not that one, Marty. Yeah, honestly, sometimes I find it difficult to keep track of all the places we wrecked during our ten years together. Just nine, Marty. Nine. Have you ever fired a Tommy gun, Marty? You mean today? You're right. Stupid question. That, that was kind of a stupid question now, wasn't it? You find it funny how most crime scenes of victims usually either beloved by everyone or hated by everyone, as in no one had anything against them or everyone was out for their blood. Yeah. Although in, in some places, in some shows that I've seen anyway, some people just don't know the person. They're like, they're kind of like indifferent. But I guess it makes for better writing or entertainment if they either are loved or hated by everybody. This was the last message of the Castilia clan before Blood Boil had them all put away for good. I guess that's something good that Blood Boil did. Why aren't we on this poster next to Blood Boil? Because he hates us, Marty. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, I like, just totally. You know, like, oh, yeah, sense of clarity. You would have looked kind of great on that poster. Hey, thanks. That's a. I thought there was like a, some underhanded insult in there, but no, he was just 
Stir up beings like you'll look good in there. You would look good. Hey. All right. That was surprisingly. I don't know. Wholesome. Are those two gonna stand out here all night long? I don't know, but I wouldn't put it past them. They're operating by some incomprehensible logic, at least for simple birds like us. I wish we had the smarts to understand. Maybe one day, Marty. Maybe one day. You remember Operation Double Spike, Marty? <laughs> Furry gods, how could I ever forget? The whole PD was laughing at the poor bastards for weeks. Every workplace needs guys like these. Nothing would be the same without them. I'm, I really want to know more about the operation now. They may be idiots, but their hearts are in the right place. Well, more or less. Probably less. And I'm sure as we, soon talk, as we start talking to them, they're probably going to insult us, but we can insult right back. How's it going tonight, boys? Uneventful so far, Sonny. But now that you're rolling together again, I suppose we'll have some excitement to look forward to. What do you mean? Are you kidding? Last time you shot up a theater, and if I remember correctly, each other. <laughs> that was a uh, complicated evening. I sure <laughs> complicated. Do you want to hear some juicy gossip, boys? Always. Deputy Malloy got so drunk he fell asleep on the toilet. <laughs> it took them an hour to find him. Stupid oaf. So that's why Blood Boil was here. Yeah, hi. And he's in a pretty sure mood because he had to come in on New Year's Eve. Just our luck. No, no, no. Your luck is that he's too busy to care about you two lovers right now. <laughs> right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, he must have been really comfy if he fell asleep on the toilet. Well, oh, he was drunk, so that definitely helped the matter. But, uh, you, you hear a lot of stories of people doing that, just falling asleep on a toilet. It's like, I can't imagine that being fun. It's not like they do it on purpose. At least I hope nobody does it on purpose. I'm just thinking, like, your legs would be numb or something, you know? Like, you can't stand up afterwards after a little while. Well, keep up the good work, boys. Or this hanging around thing you do. Thanks, chickens. Nothing else, right? Well, or thanks. Nope. All right. Anything change in here? Well, we can see Officer Barkman and Jardine. There's a shooting range. And we can't really go anywhere else. We can't, like, go into Blood Boil's office or anything like that. So, hmm. And there's good old Monica. So let's take a look around really quick before we talk to Bosco or Monica. Don't drink that shit, Marty. It's bad for your health. Sonny, you are bad for my health. Don't drink, Sonny. Like, what's in the vending machine? I'm, I'm just curious. It's just Monica. And only Monica. Join the force. Protect the crown. Serve the people. Get bribed. Get beaten by a hooker. Get fat. Well, you know, for each pro, there's a con. Nice words. Nice promises. Nice bullshit. Why is it always... Hey, stop talking like that. It's disrespectful. Why is it always a lion? Lions are lazy, dull, good-for-nothing creatures. Hey, stop talking like that. It's disrespectful. Why? Aren't I right? Not every lion's the same. Just like not every rooster is an asshole like you. You got me. Okay, so Sonny's a little racist against lions, apparently. I can't even remember why I became a cop. Was it a drugs? Was it a hookers? I can't. Maybe it was pride in initially. The need to help. Who knows? I can't even. Did you ever notice how much bigger the lion and the fox are than the other animals? You know, maybe all animals are equal, but some animals are more equal than others. Huh. So that's why our king's a fox and not a sheep or a bird, right? It's maybe a little late, but you're starting to get it, detective. You know, I want to say 
that line there, maybe all animals are equal, but maybe some animals are more equal than others. That might be that might be a direct reference to Animal Farm, if you guys ever read that book. I really enjoyed it. I know it's a cliche book to read for high school, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and like, yeah, just if you guys don't know about it, it's like literally, it's a farm. There's animals there, but then they're sick and tired of like how their humans treat them, and they stage a coup, like a revolt. And then the animals take over. And then the thing is, they vow not to be like the, the humans. But sure enough, they become just like them, if not even worse. Where initially, there was that one rule, all animals are created equal. And then when things got worse and worse, they changed it where some animals are more equal than others. I think it ended up being the pigs who ended up being like the um, the more equal. Like they they were the top tier animals in the animal farm until I, don't, I forgot how it ended. But it's a it's a damn good book. I suggest you guys read it. You're really glad you played Doki Doki before watching someone else play. Some games are better experience in person without spoilers. Yeah, I I agree, Zagor. I agree. Where are the insects anyway? And the reptiles? Did you ever think about that? Many times. I think they didn't fit the idyllic image, so they've been left out. Simple as that. Uh, that says a lot about this city. It says everything, Monty. Did you know there's a theory that the Foundation War was a hoax? That the reptiles deliberately kept in the background, but in reality, they're the ones controlling the city from the underground even now. What? Where did you hear that? I've never heard such sheep shit before. I read it in Tomorrow's Word. That's a pretty prestigious newspaper. I wouldn't use that trash to wipe my cloaca, Marty. It'll rot your brain. Well, at least I read something other than the labels on liquor bottles. Hey, that was a bit below the belt. Yep, but true. You got me. Well, damn. So, yeah, like, was that like a conspiracy theory thing like people believe that today like like rep the reptilian people like and it's like oh okay who knows we could all be wrong about it you know then we find out like after it's our time to go then when we find out all the truths out there who knows it's a very beautiful crest yeah it is just like the city from afar at least uh, a cloaca is a chicken's rump for those wondering thank you poe girl I was thinking that. I was like, does he mean wiping his butt? Yeah, okay, there you go. You also want to watch a friend's AOC LP, but I also want to play it blind too. What's AOC, Poe girl? Unfortunately, I was, I was one person that got spoiled on DDLC. I, I was too, Derpy. But uh, I'm kind of glad I was spoiled on it because I was thinking of playing that game like randomly as a stream. Even though I'm sure it would have been entertaining for you guys to see my um, reactions to how the game showed its true colors, I don't know if I would have liked seeing that because like there there was things in there I just did not like to see whatsoever. So I'm like, ugh. Let's take a look at this conspiracy theory, by the way. The found oh, the founding war actually. It was a great war between the Alliance and the Swamp Clans that finally decided Clawville's fate and raised the city in the hands of the Alliance among the great colonial powers. This marks the beginning of the Clawville's time, meaning it occurred exactly 942 years ago. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Uh. Oh! Age of Calamity. That's right. Yeah, that's a, that's a game I want to play it just because I want to know the story of like you know the Breath of the Wild and what happened a hundred years ago like more thoroughly. At the same time, I think I'm, I'm gonna wait until that goes on better price. But knowing Nintendo, that better price is gonna be like forty dollars, and it won't happen until like five years from now. So there's that. Miss Jardine, one of the seven female officers of the Clawville PD. There's only seven female officers? 
Miss Jardine. Well, at least I have some female officers, but still. Officer Barkman, unwavering cop and a slavering beast. Officer. All right. Good old Bosco's slowly becoming the same piece of furniture we are. Sure. You remember when he was just a little green lap dog? For a while, we even had to babysit him. He always was a talented little pooch, I have to admit. But the filth that seeped into everything in Clawville has reached him, too. It reaches everyone one way or another, right? One way or another, it does, Marty. You had a fight once, didn't you? At one of the winter solstice parties. Yeah, we both drank too much. It was over a manatee named Margaret. That was before Laura, of course. I haven't seen many fights that memorable in my life. Yeah, and the girl didn't go with either of us. She was a wise manatee. Well, that's... something. <laughs> I, uh, can't believe that happened. All right. Is it worth talking to him? Who knows? Maybe he heard something interesting. All right, let's talk to him and find out. Hey, big guy. Hey, Cox, what's up? Back here so soon? Did you get nostalgic all of a sudden, Sonny? I'd rather be anywhere else than here, Bosco. But we're sniffing around on a case. Hoo hoo. Are you trespassing again? Who? Us? What are you thinking? Ah, uh, just an old case. Still open. Not official, but not active either. We're not bothering anyone. You know, old habits die hard. I know, I know. I'm just messing with you. So, how can I help you? The boss? He's not in a good mood. Molloy got so drunk he pissed himself. And we just put the cherry on top, huh? Mostly you, Sonny. No offense. None taken. I'm used to it. Everything rolls right off my feathers. So he pissed himself, but he fell asleep on a toilet too anyway, right? So I guess it kind of works out? But then again, he probably pissed all over the front of the toilet if he's sitting down. So he, either way, he made a mess. So that's not, that's no good. Don't go stirring up a shitstorm, okay? We're gonna have enough on our plates tonight. We'll do what we can, Bosco, but I can't promise anything. All right, let's go down the list. Do you still remember, Philmar? Do you mean Philip? Of course I remember. He's got quite the reputation with that Philmar alias. We just met him. Small world, huh? Do you know what he's up to these days? Yeah, as far as I know, he's investigating petty blackmail cases and sneaking after poor bastards cheating on their wives. Anything else? Did he get mixed up in something that stirred up a storm recently? Yeah, I don't know about that. We haven't seen him at the PD for a while. He's usually a frequent visitor. Why? Did he run into some fishy business again? Possible, Bosco. But I'm not sure he'd want to make the same mistake. Wise decision. Listen, Bosco. What do you make of this list? Maybe it's the guest list of some fancy ball. These are some rather influential names, the ones I recognize anyway. Movie stars, politicians, a few names from the Council of Twelve, even, if I'm not mistaken. You're not. Are you blackmailing them? Because if you are, I'll gladly accept a nice big juicy bone in exchange for my silence. Stop screwing around, Bosco. It has nothing to do with our case. Which is what, exactly? Mm, we're still not gonna tell you. Because screw you. I'm gonna catch up the chat really quick here. You're guessing because female officers were rare back then? It could be. Or maybe like they only had, maybe they more female officer, females wanted to be officers here, but maybe because of sexism or quota, or whatever, maybe they just only allowed a certain number. I don't know. Yeah, Bosco, the bastards cheating on their wives are the poor ones. God, some people, I swear. Yeah, yeah, people are odd, to say the least. Um, I'm pretty sure most women were stay-at-home wives, moms back then. Maybe. 
then again, this is a world where animals are doing everything, so maybe they didn't exactly follow the same aspects of what happened in our history as humans. Listen, Bosco, what have you heard about that singer, Natasha Katsenko? <laughs> you mean that little bimbo fooling around with Ibn Wessler? They say she's the jackpot, but I've never been into cats, you know. You couldn't be more racist if you tried, Bosco. <laughs> don't misunderstand me. I don't have a problem with cats at all. I'm simply allergic to them. I can't stand being around them. I don't even take cases with cats. Good for you. I should have used that excuse myself. Why? Is your investigation related to her? What? No, of course not. We, we just came from her show. That's why I asked. <laughs> and what's she like? Well, I guess your cat allergy would go away for the rest of your life if you met her. <laughs> really? Uh, maybe I'll have a go and see for myself one day. I mean, Natasha. That, yeah. I mean, there was that painting. It's like, hmm, this better not awaken something in me. <laughs> anyway, well, I guess that's that from Bosco. Don't go. Well, do what. So, and that we did see. What was the two things that showed up here? I think one of them was a codex entry, wasn't it? I don't know what the other one is, so I unfortunately missed that. But Council 12. Although Clawville is a monarchy, the actual power and jurisdiction, aside from the king, are in the hands of the Council of 12. Or, as most animals think, entirely, and the king himself is only a, mu a puppet and a symbol. The members of the council are the mightiest animals in the city after after the king, employing not only politicians, but influential businessmen as well. Well, that's really intriguing. Alright then. I mean, I don't know who... What else got added? Maybe this? Yeah, a couple years ago, Bosco and Marty had a huge fight because some girl in the office... Neither of them got her got her in the end, but at least both gained some valuable life lessons. And a few scratches, of course. Because why the hell not? Do you remember Monica ever going on holiday? Honestly? I can't recall. Sometimes I can't decide if it's admirable or if I feel sorry for her. Maybe a bit of both. But is it selfish to say I'd be hurt if one day I didn't find her here? Yeah, I feel the same. That's all right, then. You know, I was kind of like that myself. Um, especially in my last position, I never took a day off or vacation at all. And even if I did, I would still end up working on that day because it's like I wasn't, I wasn't going to end up doing anything earlier in the day anyway, so I might as well work. Um, so... I gotta learn to just relax more, but ah, just how I am. Yeah, in, in my last position, like the three years I was there, I never took a day off. Besides, like, holidays that were forced day off, I never took a day off or vacation besides that. You know, if there's anyone who knows anything about anything, it's gonna be her. Kind of long-winded, but I agree. So soon? That was fast. Almost a record. Sorry, Mon. We're just here for a little, uh, info. When are you not here for that, boys? How about wish me a happy birthday for a change? G what? Is it your birthday today? Of course not. Don't be silly, Marty. You know exactly when it is. We've talked about it a dozen times. Yeah, <laughs> of course I know. Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, could you help us with this and that? Of course, boys, but be quick about it. I'm in over my head with paperwork and blood boils breathing down my neck. We'll be quick like a hurricane. You're very lucky, boys. You just missed the boss by three minutes. Right now, he's trying to get Malloy out of the toilet. Still can't hold his liquor, huh? Neither on or off duty, but today he is sloshed. Well, he's a water buffalo, isn't he? He knows how to swim. Uh, no, Sonny, just a buffalo. The two are totally different things. 
Listen, doll, we have some questions. Make it quick, boys. I'm busy. Let's see. You always enjoyed your days off. You can do chores like laundry and cleaning. Yeah, I mean, that is something I should have done more often. I, I kind of saved like, those chores for the weekend. Um, but I should have taken the time for myself. I mean, now I'm doing so because this pandemic yeah, really jacked up a lot of things, unfortunately. But, you know, well, everybody's getting back into things. Don't tell me he fell into the toilet. Um, well, I, don't, I doubt he got, I doubt he fell into it. He, he is a, he's a buffalo. So unless those damn toilets are humongo, I want to say he's just, actually, I don't know. I don't know. Guess who we met today in person, Mon? King Hector III? Even better. The one who commands the king. Wait a minute. Hobart Wessler? Damn right. Hobart Ibn Wessler in the flesh. Wow. And you're still alive. That's quite an accomplishment. But seriously, have you heard that he wants to get out of the black market business? Allegedly, he's trying to clear his name with some kind of new meat substitute. His name's gonna be rather difficult to clear. It's a heroic and impossible venture. I haven't heard about it, but it's an interesting addition to what I know. Which is? Eben's been acting very strange lately, and he left most of his business dealings to one of his goons, Mickey. Also known as the Butcher, the Mongrel, and the Slayer. Yeah, we once had the pleasure of meeting him. That's all I know, boys. I know it's not very much, but it's something, I guess. I'll keep my ears open. Thanks, Mon. I mean, that helps out. Or does it really? I mean, here's, here's, I'm like, I'm very iffy about aspects of this game. It's like, they give us a chance to go to these places that are timed. I mean, we can only go there for a little bit. But does it do anything? Does it change anything in the story, per se? Like, we, we didn't get, like, a little notification that said, hey, you found new information. So... I don't know. Listen, Mon, a reliable old friend shoved this into my hand. Could you take a quick glance at it? Hmm, quite an imposing list. What could those numbers mean? It could be a date even, but no, this is something else. That's what we were thinking too, and we got nowhere. But you see a lot of documents. So is there anything familiar about this? Unfortunately not, boys. The names are imposing indeed, but based on this, it could be almost anything. The richest of the rich get together on all kinds of excuses. Huh, it must be a secret cult. It could be, of course, but also anything else. I'm sorry I couldn't help you more. I don't mention it, Mon. Thanks for your time. Or, wait a minute. There is something. Oh, stop teasing us, Mon. I'm sure you've noticed that all the names in the list are men, right? Yeah, of course we noticed. Uh, thanks for the observation, Monica. Don't mention it. I'm just a receptionist. Monica's awesome. Because uh, I didn't even make that little uh, note there. So they're all men. Hmm. Well, all right. We'll see what else we can learn. We saw a pretty good show at the Czar Club tonight. Good for you, I guess. Natasha? Natasha. She performed a new song. She also sang about why she called us there. Or rather, me. And? That's confidential, Dollface. Anyway, I can't help wondering about that woman. Her past is a mystery. And I couldn't draw much out of her in person, either. Women like her always have something to hide, Sonny. I think that's exactly what makes men fall head over heels for them. I know another broad who's all mysterious. Oh, yeah? What's her name? I'll look her up if we have a file on her. Marty, shut up. Oh, you mean me, right? All mysterious, full of secrets, and grace. I didn't even hear that, Marty. <laughs> oh, Marty struck out. It's, it's kind of funny to see. 
Do we have a file on a woman called Olivia Blackwig? She's currently working as Ibn Wessler's assistant. Hmm. We don't have a file on her, but there are a few Blackwigs that could be related to her. Mountain goat, crow, or caiman? Crow, around 30 to 35. A very pretty socialite. Maybe we have a catch then. Theodore Blackwig was a rather influential banker until he went bankrupt. He died a few years back, but his daughter could have ended up in the same social circles as Eben. And since they lost their money, she took a job as his assistant. Yeah, it would fit the picture. But it's a big city, Sonny. There are maybe more than one Crow family with a Blackwig name living here. Hmm. Thanks, Mon. I'm glad I could help, boys, as always. If it doesn't take a lot of my time, that is. We know, we know. We're not even here anymore. Okay. Now, once again, this is cool information that we got, like possible family background of Olivia, possible information regarding Ibn handling off some stuff to his associate. Um, I forgot his name already. Mickey. So, it's like, what like, are we gonna use this information or, or is it more so nice to know anyway uh that's that for the police department although let me take a quick look at the shooting range i mean marty's right there i guess we can talk to him don't forget to keep your gun clean marty hey i take them all apart every day clean and oil them if you want to know i didn't want to know no use crying over spilt milk i mean is it necessary to do that every single day though uh, i really don't know i don't know anything regarding gun care at all so i assume you had to do it once in a while but every day seems excessive which one of them was first peace or guns you mean why did the chicken cross the road i don't know which one of them was me I well there you go answer your question you don't know you sure we won't need Layla you call this monster Layla she's not a monster Sonny if you know how to treat her right she's a real ballerina uh -huh. I believe you pal but we're not taking her oh so dejected, holy crap. And what if... No, Marty, there's no way in hell we're taking a Tommy gun with us. Ugh, all right. Please, I'm sure he has room in there somewhere for her, come on. I believe this piece is forbidden. Cops can't use it, but this is Marty's personal collection, so it doesn't matter. At least nobody has ever complained. All right, so be it. Now, we could do this again if we want, but I don't want—I don't want to. We already did so. We don't want to—we don't want to waste electricity either. So I'll shut the lights. You seem unsure. Really? Yeah, I think I'm just tired. You know, Laura and I have been fighting recently, and I've been sleeping on the couch. Yeah. Well, it shows. Thanks. You always know how to cheer someone up. Laura didn't throw you out, did she? No, nothing like that. It's uh, just a little unrest. Uh-huh, I see. Marty looks kind of run down today, but he's still in better shape than I am. That must hurt for Sonny then. It may not be a good time to say this, but I've got a bad feeling about tonight. You could have told me about that sooner, Sonny. You can still turn back. Stay here and keep wasting ammo. Like hell. Whatever insane shit's waiting for us, it's way better than dying of boredom. Well, I'm sure we won't be bored. I hope not. Don't you want to practice a little? You must be all rusty after such a long hiatus. If you want to know, I sometimes practice at the empty hotel. Leslie lets you shoot up the place. Lewis. And no, he doesn't. But there's a room that one of the gorillas of the Castilla clan had totally trashed. He won't notice one or two holes. Ah, clever. 
That is pretty smart, you know? If the bullet hole's already there, what's an extra one or two, you know? Shall we go, or do you want to stay and shoot a bit? I don't know. But don't worry, we'll soon be on our way. Whatever you want, boss bird. Well, I guess we're all... Ah, no, no, no. I guess we're all done here. Um... Which means that... <laughs> After 50 minutes of playing this game, we can actually get going to the main part of the story. And that's simply um, going to the weekend house of Natasha. And yeah, let's, let's try it out. Oh God, excuse me. And I apologize if the frame rates seem a little funky right now. It seems like they are, I don't know. Well, if there's one thing I'd learned during 20 years of detective work, it's that if someone wants to meet you at a remote location at night, you should bring an army for backup. One time, me and Marty were stupid enough to underestimate a situation like that, and we never really recovered. And yet, here we were again, about to step alone into something hauntingly familiar. Only one tactic remained, as the old dogs say. Balls to the wall. Ah, this place gives me the creeps. I wouldn't say I like it either. Let's take a look around before we go inside. Textbook. I'm telling you, it's a trap. Shut up, Marty. I mean, frankly, I have a bad feeling about all this myself. Um, please don't tell me Natasha's dead. Well, see, that little image I showed up of, like, a woman's hand falling and being blood and that white feather. I don't know if they were talking about what happened previously, or is that something that just happened right now? I mean, I, I mean, I do have a bad feeling about this whole night, you know? It can't be, I don't know, it just can't be that simple, you know? We got like just a random ass shoe here. I mean, all right. Um, I'm I'm just trying to see what else what what there is to investigate. We have the shoe, we have the the word, and I think that's it that we can look at. This car's kind of nice. The trunk. Look in the trunk. I think he means trunk. Chicken police, hands up. Marty, that's enough. Oh, it, it's just... I thought that was... I didn't think that was our car. Whoopsie-daisy. Chicken police. Marty, that... So that's all that happens? It's just... All right. So, this is the word. What can I say? The message is loud and clear. Yeah, what matters is who is it for and what does it mean? I can't misunderstand that if I wanted to. We'll see. Wait a second, did that bimbo put a spell on you? As you used to say, don't let it cloud your objective judgment, boss bird. Watch who you're talking to, boy. You wrote that down? It burned into my mind. You wrote that? It burned. Damn. It's not a good sign. Maybe she just lost it when she hurried into the house. Yeah, right. Do you think it belongs to Natasha? No idea. Do you think I measured her feet when I was in her room? Not sure I want to know, but I wouldn't be surprised. Should we take it? Hell no. I'll buy you one if you want. This is police business. Do you mean the real cops? Do you think? I'm almost certain. My crest is tingling. Damn it. Well, thank God I have a weapon on me, or two. When do you not have one? Fair point. Stop staring at it. You're freaking me out. Okay, okay. I just like shoes. Hurry, hell, Marty. I don't want to know. He likes shoes or he likes feet. I mean... Stop staring. Oh, hurry. Either way, it looks like this doesn't... Well, it doesn't look good. And before I go in the entrance, I actually would like to take a break. And when I come back in a few minutes, hopefully in a few minutes, I, it, it might be a little bit of a longer break. I have something I need to do. 
but uh, we'll go ahead and investigate the inside of the house and take things from there. And I do like how, I mean, with a game and world devoid of color, it's nice when they actually utilize it for like, it's more of an impact, like the big red lettering of horror, but in the, the yellow shoe and Natasha's green eyes. I love that aesthetic, you know? But uh, we'll see what's what. But yeah, we, uh, we'll we come back in a few minutes and investigate the house and hope to God nothing's bad. See you guys in a little bit.